The first objection that I encountered when I started speaking with Jehovah's Witnesses over the deity of Christ was, how can Jesus be both God and the Son of God? And the reason why Jehovah's Witnesses ask this question is because they operate under a strict Unitarian concept of God. It's not just that they don't believe that the Godhead can be plural, but they cannot believe that the Godhead could be plural. Right? They're taught to, to not be able to believe it under any circumstance. And it's kind of interesting. It's, it's, it's funny because Jehovah's Witnesses have this same concept within their core doctrine. For example, the faithful and discreet slave of Matthew 24 is spoken of as a singular slave. Yet the Jehovah's Witnesses believe this singular slave is composed of eight men. So what they allow for men, they won't allow for God. But yeah, Jehovah's Witnesses, um, they just they just cannot believe. Now, we can go into the uh, the claims that Jesus made, right? He called himself the I am, John 8, 58. Uh, Titus 2, 13 says, are waiting for the appearing of our great God and Savior. Um, uh, 2 Peter 1, 1, you know, our God and Savior. You know, all throughout the God, John 20, verse 28, when uh, Thomas looks at Jesus and says, my Lord and my God, right? So we can go and... We, we can go into all of the scriptures, even the claims that Jesus made. He called himself the resurrection. Uh, he called himself the bread of life. He called him, you know, there's just so many passages in, in the scriptures uh, that we can that we can point to to demonstrate the deity of Christ. But let's break down that objection. Jesus cannot be fully God because he was a son of God. Now, when Jesus was a man, right, during his earthly ministry, he had two primary titles that he went by. He went by the Son of Man, and he went by the Son of God. But Jehovah's Witnesses object that Jesus cannot be fully God because his title was the Son of God. If you follow that to its logical conclusion, then and you apply it to the same, you know, apply that same standard to his other title, then we have to conclude that Jesus was not fully man because he was the Son of Man, right? It's a ridiculous objection when you think about it like that. But that's, you know, if you're a consistent Jehovah's Witness, that's what you come that's why you walk away with if you if that's your objection right now jehovah's witnesses what they're doing is they're confusing the nature of of jesus and his title now as a as a you know his being jesus's being was let's let's set aside his divinity jesus was a man he was fully man begotten of the virgin mary right his mother was a human Jesus was the son of man because he was the offspring of humanity. Regardless if it was a supernatural birth or, you know, whatever the case, he didn't have a father, but he did have a mother, an earthly mother. Therefore, he was the son of man. Now, we believe that Jesus was begotten, not twice, but once. He was begotten, um, you know, through the conception, right? Through uh, the conception of Mary, uh, that he was begotten of God. Therefore, he was the son of God, right? He was God's son. And so both of them, they actually have spiritual application, the son of man and the son of God. But that's why he has the title son, because he has a father. Prior to, you know, you know, and Christians debate over this, whether Jesus was eternally the son or if he became the son, um, you know, either or. Go ahead and uh, feel free to leave your, uh, your objections in the comment section. But we're dealing with the objection, right? that Jesus was, um, you know, him being the son of God does not exclude him from being fully God. Jesus was the son of man and Jesus was man, fully man. Both of those are true. It's not just one or the other. You know, both of them are, are true statements. Jesus was the son of man. Jesus was fully man. Likewise, Jesus was the son of God and he was fully God. Now, think about this for a second, Jehovah's Witnesses. Jesus never said verbatim, word verbatim, that I am God. He never said that. So why did the Jews interpret it, his statements as him being equal with God? For example, in John chapter 5, Jesus says that um, he, he calls God his father, right? He says, my father works and I work. And then the Jews, uh, you know, they, they weren't going to stone him for his works that he was doing. They were stoning him because he said that God was his father, which is what they uh, which is what they claim for themselves. They said we have one father, even God, right? Now, the reason why the Jews interpreted his statement as him uh, claiming to be equal with God is because every function of God, he was, he was carrying out. He was carrying out every function of God. Every work of God he was doing. And then he was calling God his father. 
therefore they were concluding that not only is he calling God his, him, you know, his, God his father, um, his own personal father, he's also carrying out the functions of God, and in association with those functions, that's why they were going to stone him. Not not for his works, but because of his claim that God was his father in application to those works, right? And so, there you go. That's the objection. Uh, Jesus was the son of man. He was also fully man. Likewise, Jesus was the son of God and he was fully God.